Hey there, Prodigy Land. It's me, Coach Randy, coming to you from my new home in suburban Kansas City. To be more specific, in Overland Park, Kansas, which used to be a regular tour stop on the Pro Bowlers Tour every year at King Louis West Lanes, the site where Mark Roth won his first PBA National Tour title in 1975 when he bowled a 299 game in the title match against local Kansas City pro Steve Jones, who had won the first three matches of the stepladder that day to get into the championship match. King Louis West is where my high school prom held its all-night after-party all those many years ago. Now imagine a 32-lane bowling center with an Olympic-size ice skating rink and a billiard room with about a dozen tournament-size pool and snooker tables all in one building. It was quite a facility. Unfortunately, King Louis West is now but a distant memory the building is still there, but it houses the Johnson County Arts and Heritage Center, and I'm told even has a section devoted to bowling. Anyway, I'll bet you thought you'd seen the last of the Prodigy Kids in Atlanta. Our Farewell Atlanta episode, recorded back in October of 2021, was a lot of fun, and we did, indeed, crown some deserving champions to end on a high note. But you know, there is one more episode of Prodigy that you've never seen. This is the episode I never intended to release. Recorded on December 7th, 2019, this is what I've called the lost episode of Prodigy Bowler's Tour. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. There were a number of reasons why I had decided not to release this episode of Prodigy. The competition is not the best, and the kids got so rowdy at times, I wasn't sure if they were really that into it. They seemed to lose interest during the preliminary matches, and I think in hindsight, the format I came up with really didn't lend itself to the kind of late heroics that make so many matches on Prodigy so thrilling to watch. Even with the problems in this episode, there were some pretty great moments on this show, and even if I wasn't too thrilled with it right after the taping, I've decided that the kids deserve, and you deserve, to see it. If I was a little mad at the time over how things played out that day, it surely wasn't the kids' fault. It was my fault for letting things spin out of control that day. So, as far as I'm concerned, that's all in the past. I've always thought the world of these kids and their achievements on the lanes are worthy of acknowledgement. So, I wanted to go ahead and let this episode out of its hiding place so all of you could enjoy it. So today, I give you the lost episode of Prodigy Bowler's Tour. Enjoy. Celebrating Junior Bowling. Elevating Junior Bowlers. This is Prodigy Bowlers Tour. From deep in the Prodigy archives comes this long lost episode of Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Episode 112, The Lost Episode. Taped at Bolero Roswell in Roswell, Georgia, way back on December 7th, 2019, and released now on March 4th, 2022. On the day of this taping, there were only six kids who stayed after league to put on a Prodigy event. So I chose to divide them into two teams. Since two of the kids were among our younger ones, I named them captains. Josh Greenberg and Hunter Moffat drafted their teams from among the other four players. Josh picked first and chose Anthony Smiga. Then Hunter took Big Logan Mathis. Then Josh picked Brandon Caraviti, which left Christian Manel as the final draft choice. These two teams would bowl a three-game match of nine-pin no-tap. The team with the highest three-game total would send its three team members to a two-match stepladder to decide the day's individual winner. So it's Josh, Anthony, and Brandon against Hunter, Big Logan, and Christian 
with the winning team sending its three players to a short two-match stepladder finals to determine who would be signing the coveted trophy pin. The captains drew up the order they would bowl. Josh's team is gonna lead off with Brandon, then Josh in the two spot, and Anthony is gonna bowl anchor. And over on team Hunter, it's gonna be Christian who leads off, then Hunter, and Big Logan will bowl in the anchor position. So, we're just about set to go, and it looks like Brandon is ready to fire the first shot. And he begins with a trip four, and that's a strike to start. That's the way it's done. And Christian with a messenger to let him know that he's here. So it's total pins for three games of these two teams. Josh pulled that one a little left of his target. And Hunter shreds the rack, and he begins with a strike. Josh will move all the way to the left side of the lane and go cross alley. Oh! But it hooks back and chops the six off the 10. That's an open frame, and you never like to see opens in nine pin no tap. Nine is good enough for a strike. And Anthony a little wide of the mark, leaving the 2-4-10 split. Now you'll notice on our scorecard, X will be a natural strike and N indicates a no-tap strike. Logan strike with the N there means nine and that's the same as a strike. Brandon going for a double. And that one goes right through the heart and he is left with the 6-10. As Christian moves over to lane 39, to try to make it two in a row. And he gets that swish area and Gets nine, good enough for a strike. And Brandon pulls it and just barely gets the six. And that is an open frame. So all three players on Team Josh have an open in the first two frames. There's one right in the hole for Hunter for a double. Josh crosses over for a strike. With the continuous action, we won't have replays during the team portion of our competition today. As things will be moving fast and furious. Yeah. Well, Anthony almost left the 2-4-10 again. This time he gets a bad break and the two goes out. There is another no tap strike for Big Logan. Ooh, pretty good run at the 4-10 split by Anthony, but back-to-back -back opens to start. And you never like to see that, but in nine pin no tap especially. Oh, look at those pins, the 4-9 go out late. But it's a strike for Brandon as Christian moves to the right lane going for a turkey. And he mixes them up. Josh 
Not quite enough ball speed for it to hold line. That one breaks sharply and he leaves the 3-6-10. Hunter. And another perfect shot by the little guy. And another chop by Josh. He will eventually learn to keep his hand more behind the ball and throw it straighter at his spares, especially right side spares. And Anthony doesn't get it up to the head pin this time and leaves the super washout, the one, two, six, ten. Another strike for Logan. Anthony going for it from the left side, trying to deflect the ball off the one into the six, but that's eight out and three opens to start in a nine pin no tap, and that's no good. And meanwhile, look at this team over on the right, Team Hunter, nothing but strikes through the first three frames. And Brandon just yanked that one dead left. Leaves the two pins that he was trying to hit with the ball. The one and three. And there's another strike by Christian. So he begins with a four bagger. And Brandon manages to make short work of the 1-3. <laughs> well, Hunter with a bit of a marshmallow there. That ball had no drive when it hit the pins. No drive, no five, but in nine pin, no tap. That's a strike. And Josh with a Brooklyn leaving only the five, and that too is good for a strike. Big Logan going for his fourth in a row. And boom, out go the lights. Anthony quick to go. And this time he gets it up to the head pin, gets nine, and that's good for his first nine pin no tap strike of this event. So looky here, Team Hunter, four frames, 12 strikes. Brandon pulls it left of target, but gets away with it. That is a Brooklyn strike. Christian swings that one well to the right. But we're bowling on the house shot today, and he brings it back, gets nine for a strike. And this time, Josh measures it perfectly, 10 back, and that's a double for Josh. Ooh, yikes. Well, the first non-strike for Team Hunter as Anthony leaves a ring and 10, but that's good for a no-tap strike. Meanwhile, Hunter will have to shoot a spare, something his team has yet to attempt in this game. The 310 baby split. I like to see him move well left for this. Oh, he gets just a little too much of the three pin. So an open frame, but Team Hunter off to a quick, decisive lead in this three games total pins match. And Big Logan with a no tap strike in the fifth, he remains perfect. Christian going for his sixth strike of this game. 
Oh, he pulled it, but it held in the oil. And leaves a four. That is a no-tap strike. A stone nine for Brandon. Normally he would not be happy with that, but good enough this time. Hunter shows him how it's done. Pastes the pocket. Puts all ten in the pit. Josh going for a turkey. Oh, he gave that one plenty of room, and it came charging back. And that's a nine-pin no-tap strike. Now Big Logan going for his sixth in a row. He slaps out the 10 on that one, remains perfect. Ooh, Anthony trips out the four late. So he's got three straight no-tap strikes. Trying to get back in this game. But Team Hunter through six frames has nothing but strikes except one frame. Brandon sends that one just a little too wide, leaves the 210. Oh, and Christian does exactly the same thing. And, well, here's something you don't see very often. Matching two tens on both lanes of the pair. Look at this. Maybe one of them will make it, maybe both. Well, not Brandon. All right, Christian, see what you can do with it. Gets too much of the two. So an open frame for both players. And now Logan, the only one left who has nothing but strikes. And Josh has finally figured out this pair. Hunter, that one crept a little high, but he'll take that four pin. That's good enough for a no-tap strike. Logan waiting on the pin setter, so Anthony will go. And there's a trip four with authority. Man, what a ball. So, seven frames, seven strikes for Big Logan. as Christian moves over to the left lane. And he gets right back on the horse. Leaves that open frame behind and gets a shaker to go. And a solid strike by Brandon as well. You saw Hunter gesturing, please stay to the right, stay to the right, but went through the nose. The three went very late for a no-tap strike. And Josh now with five in a row. Three of those naturals. Again, the strike is indicated by an X as usual. If it's a no-tap strike with nine, it's an N. Logan, the front eight. And now we're seeing the pins falling like crazy. This is more like what I expected. An easy house shot condition, nine pin no tap. We should see some scores today. There's another strike from Brandon.
And Christian, right in the pocket for another strike. Oh, Josh got that one just a touch too wide and he gets eight, so he'll have to shoot at this. The two five. Got to be careful of a chop here. But he gets them both. And Hunter stuffs them straight back. Anthony through the nose this time leaves the three, six, seven. And he will go ahead and shoot at it while Logan waits for pins. Ooh, pretty close. Logan going for the ninth. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Timber! The two and 10 went late, but nine is enough for a strike and Big Logan will go to the 10th frame with 300 still in his sights. Christian still has a possible 266. There's a no tap strike. And Brandon sends that one wide, lets it come back like he brings it back like a yo-yo on a string. Josh, you're getting a little too anxious, buddy. It's not your turn yet. Tenth frame, Brandon gets two more. This one to get into the 260s. Boom. Brandon with a possible 212. And there's a solid strike. Well, the strikes are flying fast and furious. It's just that uh, one of these teams got off to a kind of a slow start. Christian finishes with a five bagger and a 266. 11 strikes in his game, one open. And Brandon, I thought that one had fallen off the cliff, but he brings it back and finishes with a 212. Well, Hunter still had a pretty big score possible, but now that will reduce his potential. Josh through the nose leaves a wide open split. Hunter can make this and then strike on the fill ball for 244. Gets the 610. Josh can't believe his misfortune, leaving the 4-7-10. Might as well go for it. Well, he gave it a good try, but that's an open frame, and he will finish with a 199. Hunter. And a no-tap strike on the fill ball for 244. Anthony, the 2-8-10, standing until very late. The 2 and 10 both go, so he gets a no-tap strike as only the 8 remains. But now Logan Mathis looking at the 10th frame for a possible 300. 
There's a strike for Anthony. Logan has actually bowled a natural 300 on Prodigy. The only one we've ever seen. And now he gets a little closer to a no-tap 300. Anthony shreds the rack for a 201. Team Josh is going to get crushed this game, I'm afraid, but two games left to go. Anything can happen. We have already had one nine pin no tap 300 on Prodigy by Logan Fossum and Darren Vance. That was in our very first season of Prodigy, in the season ending adult youth. Scotch doubles, nine pin, no tap. And Darren Vance threw the final balls in that game. But Logan Fossum certainly threw some good ones. It all comes down to this, Logan Mathis now for 300. And he gets a shaker to go similar to the one that he got on the 12th ball when he threw the only natural 300 we've ever had on Prodigy. He threw that one on lane 40, the lane that has bedeviled him at times, but it's Logan Mathis who shoots a 300 to get things started today in our team competition. Game two is coming up. So this performance bowling ball is yet another way Bridgestone is bringing its tire technologies to the world of sports. Right. It's about going farther with less energy. The same technology that can save you up to $450 in gas over the life of our Ecopia tires is being tested here. That's pro bowling champ Kelly Kulik. Minimal exertion, maximum distance and control. Looks like Kelly wants your prototype. At Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. You are about to see three strikes made the hard way with a different kind of bowling ball, the AMF Impact KE21. So much pain punishing power. It's almost unfair. Well, Team Hunter jumped off to a huge lead following game one. With Christian firing a 266, Hunter with a 244, and Big Logan Mathis shooting a 300 for a stellar total of 810. That gives Team Hunter a whopping 198 pin lead over Team Josh after just one game. But in nine pin no tap, and with two games left, most anything is possible if you can just keep the ball in the pocket. And on today's easy condition, that should be doable. But Brandon, Josh, and Anthony have their work cut out for them as 198 pins is a huge deficit from which to come back. They're going to need some big games of their own, but they can do it. The problem you run into when you're bowling on an easy house shot in nine pin no tap is that the team that's up by 198 pins, they're still bowling on an easy condition and so far they're all bowling really well. So you're hoping that they run into trouble. Christian trips the four to begin. And now Brandon steps up on lane 40 to begin his second game. Swings that thing way out and brings it back for a strike. Hunter. Kicks out the 10 just like he had hoped. All strikes so far. And there's a no-tap strike for Josh, so... 
First two players on each team starting the way they had hoped. Well, you wonder sometimes after a big game like the one Logan just, oh my goodness, what happened here? Anthony just threw that one in the moat. Sometimes a player shoots a big game like Logan just did. They have a letdown when the second game begins, but not this time. Oh, six out. And another disastrous start for Anthony. Well, I'm hearing that Anthony is reporting that he's not feeling all that well. So that may have something to do with the way he's playing today. He's certainly capable of better. There's a solid strike by Brandon. And there's a messenger strike for Christian. He stays perfect, and look at Josh. He finds the pocket, and that's 10 in the pit. Oh my goodness. He sent that one way out to the right. And he gives it a facetious fist pump and a yes. I think he's just joking. Well, Anthony throwing it pretty hard today. It's not going to get to read the lane like you would like when you throw it that hard. The one, two, four. Good spare. And Hunter just tries to throw at the 7-10 as hard as he can. But that one goes off into the channel, and that's eight out for Hunter. Logan hasn't missed yet. 300 in the first game. Strike to start the second game. See how many in a row he can get. Boom. Wow. He is locked in. I know as competitive as Christian is, even though they're teammates, he wants to stay with Logan. But he's not going to do it throwing them like that. The big four. The four, six, seven, ten. It's a wrap 10 for Brandon, but a nine pin no tap strike. And when you leave the four, six, seven, 10, and Christian is not happy because the pin setter has just dropped the sweep in front of his spare and now he can't shoot at it. So we wait. And Josh nearly leaves the same thing, the four, six, seven. Well, in Josh's case, you just go for the two on the left. And now the pin setter has swept Christian's spare away, so we'll have to get it reset. Just go for two, save the count. It's really all you can do in a situation like that. And now we wait for them to dispatch the mechanic to the back to reset the 4, 6, 7, 10 for Christian. And he's not real happy about that. And oh my goodness, Anthony lofts that one halfway to the ceiling. I'm not sure why other than the fact that he's just not pleased. And with the team trailing by 198 pins, he may have given up already. 
six out. Oh my. And you can read his body language. I think he wants to be almost anywhere but here. And he's still got almost two full games to go. Well, apparently the mechanic in the back had to be summoned from, I don't know, Florida, perhaps. There's only 40 lanes in this bowling center. I don't know how far away he could possibly be. But in the five years that Prodigy was held here at Bolero Roswell, I must say, we saw a ton of this kind of stuff happen. I wish I could tell you that the maintenance at this bowling center was better than it has been. Although, as I do the play-by-play -play for this episode that was filmed over two years ago, in December of 2019, I'm happy to report that they tell me that things are getting better at Bolero Roswell. They have a new guy in charge of the maintenance there, and I know him. He was a young go-getter when I was there, and hopefully things will improve. I suspect part of the problem, though, is budget. They just spent more money on preventative maintenance when Brunswick owned this bowling center. Well, that was hardly worth waiting for. Christian clips the 10 pin off the big four, and that's seven out. Hunter up on lane 39. And gets a nine pin no tap strike. Christian can hardly wait to get up and rinse the taste of that open frame out of his mouth. He is ready to go. And that's how you do it. Gets a shaker and a strike. All right, big Logan. Ring and 10. Under some circumstances, he might not like that, but it's good for a strike in this case. And another strike for Hunter. So Big Logan now with 15 in a row. Brandon crosses over and trips the six to keep his string going. He's perfect through four. Josh is gonna go ahead and go. And maybe should have waited. The three, six, 10. Logan knew that was good as soon as he let it go. He turned around knowing. There's a spare for Josh. This time there was no chop on that 3-6-10 combination. Anthony goes with his spare ball. And it goes straight, but straight through the nose. He leaves the 4-6-7. <laughs> Nine out for Anthony, but meanwhile, Brandon gets a huge break. The 2-4-5 crumbles down to leave just one pin, and we know what that means. Nine is equal to a strike in nine pin no tap, so Brandon now has five strikes in a row to start this second game. And now if just Josh and Anthony would start to pick up the pace, 
Oh my goodness. That didn't look that high. But it was breaking sharply, and now Josh gets to shoot at the four, seven, ten. There's a weak 10, but good enough for a no-tap strike for Christian as Josh leaves the 10 pin on that split, so that's an open frame. Hunter going for three in a row. And he shreds the rack, rips that five right over into the seven. So he's got four strikes in five frames, all four of them naturals. There is a no-tap strike for Anthony. Those have been all too rare today. Oh, he cut that one just a little bit short, but he gets away with it. The four remains, but nine is a strike. So he's through five frames in this game, and he hasn't failed to strike yet. Oh, Christian grabbed that one at the bottom. Did you see how the ball went vertical up in the air off his hand? When that happens, you sometimes get a little more fingers on the ball, and it makes the ball overhook, and that's exactly what it did. And the six falls out, that's a bit of a bad break. Brandon, solid in the pocket. He's now halfway there for a 300 of his own. Christian for the baby split. Wide with it, just misses the three. So that's his second open this game. And there's a solid strike by Josh. Trying to regroup. And Hunter was begging for that one to get back, but it doesn't. A shredder by Anthony. So he's got two in a row. Hunter now for the two, four, eight, ten. This can be made. Got to hook it into the two, but he gets too much of the two. So that's nine out. And now Christian, who's gone strike, strike, open, strike, strike, open, will try to finish strong. Right in the pocket, solid strike. Logan, he has 17 strikes in a row so far. Oh, and that one was just a skosh too wide. And so for the first time today, Logan fails to strike. He leaves the 2-4-8, a tricky little spare. You shoot it like the 2-8. And Hunter goes through the nose and leaves some work of his own. Well done by Logan. So five strikes and then a spare. Hunter living dangerously, getting that one on the left side, the 3-6-10, but it's a spare now. Brandon, just a little high, leaving the four. That's another nine pin no tap strike and he's perfect through seven. There's another no tap strike. Josh with the 10 pin. 
And now Logan will try to put that sixth frame behind him and start another string. That's the way it's done. He is just on fire today. Anthony. Man, that is a 10 pin with an attitude there. But it's a nine pin no tap strike. So three in a row for Anthony. And now Brandon going for his eighth in a row. Oh, and that was a little high. It could have been the 410, but both the four and the 10 go out. Take that whenever you can get it. Now he's got the front eight. Christian a little bit thin on the head pin, leaves the 210 as Josh fails to get up to the head pin and leaves the washout. One, two, four, ten. Let's see what these two fellas can do with these tricky spares. That overhooks, leaving the head pin. And Christian gets a little too much of the two pin, so opens for both players. That's how you get rid of the two pin right there. Anthony with a light hit that shakes him up and he gets them all. This time Hunter shot broke sharply at the end and he leaves one of the more difficult spares that's a non-split that players will have. The three, six, nine, ten. Christian with a change of balls. Gets the messenger to take out the 10. And that's the problem with the three, six, nine, 10. You get the three, six, and 10, but if you don't have enough drive on the ball on the back end, you leave that sleeper nine. So an open for Hunter. Now he's quick to go on the left lane. Oh, and look at this. That five pin must have slid four inches off spot. Makes that split a little harder. That is a nine pin no tap strike for Big Logan. And we've got an out of range on lane 39. An out of range simply is when the pin moves just far enough that the pin setters holes in the bottom of the deck aren't big enough to be able to descend and grab the pin around its neck. That's the front nine for Brandon, so we're going to get to watch another attempt at a 300 game here in just a moment. But once again, we have to wait for the mechanic to do his thing in the back so that Hunter can shoot at the 5-7. Stone solid strike by Josh. And we wait. Did anybody bring a deck of cards or an iPad or a book to read? I would break into song for you, but I don't want to scare small children. All right, it looks like some activity is going on down there. Oh, wait a minute. They've shut the lights down, and there are legs and feet. Looks like he's clearing dead wood, and the lights should come back on here in a moment. And now Hunter will get a chance to shoot at this split. Now remember, that five pin moved about four inches to the right, so 
This is a little wider than normal. You'd probably want to adjust for that with your feet. That might have been about the right spot to throw it had the five remained on spot. Anthony goes through the nose, and look, the 10 goes down late. Either way, it was going to be a strike, whether it was nine or all 10. But that way, he gets credit for a natural strike. Big Logan. He fails to strike just once this game so far after shooting 300 the first game. Possible 277 this time. Christian, first ball on the 10th. He can't throw it any better than that. Brandon would love to have one of those right here. I know this is nine pin no tap, but I have to wonder if Brandon has ever been in this position before. Nine pin no tap or any other way. He doesn't show any nerves. Can't throw it much better than that. He is two strikes away from a 300. Christian, another solid strike in the 11th. He has a possible 194 with one more strike on the fill ball. But Brandon is the one all eyes are on now. He needs two more for a perfect game. Oh, no! Well, it looked like he let up on the speed a little bit. He certainly didn't get it as wide as some of the others. But that's a five count. So a spare here for 285. This would be a good spare to make. The three, four, six, seven, ten. Christian gets a light shaker to go. Brandon? Uh, just misses the three pin a little to the right, so that's seven out and an unusual score, 282. I'm not sure I've ever seen a 282 before, but that's still a good game. Hunter with a strike in the tenth. And Josh once again high on the head pin and you can see his frustration a little upset it's so frustrating when all you need is nine and you keep coming up short getting eight or seven and you know there are strikes to be had out there because everybody's throwing them around you but that's an open frame in the 10th josh finishes with a 163. And now Hunter with seven count. Anthony through the nose gets eight, so he'll have to shoot this one. Possible 189 for Anthony. Well, that's not gonna happen. Eight out, that gives him 175. And Hunter chops the 3 6 off the 10 for 9 out. So he finishes with the same score as his buddy Josh. That's a 163. So Team Josh was needing to cut into that 198 pin lead that Team Hunter built in the first game. And Logan is going to dash those hopes. There's another strike. Despite Brandon doing his part with a 282, Logan is going to come pretty close to neutralizing that. He has a possible 277. He's already in the 260s with that first strike in the 10th. Christian score bested Anthony's. 
and Josh and Hunter canceled each other out. So see where Logan finishes here. That gets him to the 270s. So it looks like Team Josh is actually going to lose ground. Instead of cutting into the lead, it looks like the lead is going to widen by a little bit. Let's see where Logan finishes up. That is a nine pin no tap strike for a 277 on the heels of his 300 game. And so even though the outcome of this may appear a certainty, we're gonna bowl game three of this team competition anyway, next. Every professional bowler has an arsenal of his own, special weapons for special lane conditions. Now, you can have your own arsenal in just two bowling balls from AMF. The AMF 3-Dot Classic in hard rubber for normal lane conditions. Now, the AMF 3-Dot Classic in soft rubber for lanes that demand more traction. Hard rubber 3-Dot, soft rubber 3-Dot. The arsenal from AMF. The new excess from AMF, it will destroy your old notions of what hook and hitting power can be. Well, Brandon did his part, firing a 282 to give Team Josh a fighting chance to close the 198 pin deficit that they had faced after the first game. But Brandon didn't get a lot of help from his teammates. And meanwhile, Big Logan put Team Hunter on his back and carried them forward with a big 277 game. So rather than shrinking the 198 pin deficit, Team Josh enters the third and final game with an even bigger hole to climb out of. As Team Hunter takes a 212 pin lead into the third and final game. Now remember, after this third game, the three players from the winning team will advance to a two-match stepladder to determine who signs the coveted trophy pin today. Christian will lead off on the right lane. And a solid strike to start. Well, just in case Brandon had any ideas of making another run at a 300 here, that's dashed in the first frame as he gets eight. Maybe it'll be Hunter's turn this time. He starts with a strike. Oh, chop suey for Brandon. An open to start, not what he wanted, not what his team needs with a 212 pin deficit. And the 5-7 for Josh, not what he wanted either. Big Logan just keeps on trucking. <laughs> that ball was a truck. Somebody get the license number. He has really got it going on today. Meanwhile, Josh has gone for another bowling ball to shoot this split. I think he wants something that'll go a little straighter. I don't think he's really thinking about where to move his feet to, so he's having a little conference with his coach. Meanwhile, Brandon will go. That's how it's done right there. So I have told Josh to move his feet three boards to the left. And I don't think he's even gonna look at his feet. He just throws it. And that 
is what you call the triumph of an uncluttered mind. <laughs> hey, it's a good spear, whatever it takes. All right, Anthony with a no-tap strike to begin this third game. Well, 212 pins is a lot to overcome, but remember, Team Hunter took the first game by 198, so it's doable, just not likely. Well, if they get a few more of those out of Christian, that'll help. But Josh with the big four and they can't afford many of those on their side. All right, Josh, just get a couple of them. Well, you don't want to do that. He gives up a couple of pins in count. That's six out. And that is eight out for Christian. So an open frame there. But Team Josh needs strikes in large quantities. And not by Team Hunter. They need them for their own selves. But instead, Anthony delivers another split. And this is just not going the way they had hoped. Oh, he went for it boldly, and why not? All right, big Logan. Can he do it again? Well, not that way. The three, four, six, seven, ten. It can be made. You got to send the three over into the four and seven. The ball will get the six and ten. And there is another messenger for Christian. So he gets back on the striking ways. Logan with an open frame. So Team Hunter is giving them a chance. Look at this. Hunter, the only one on Team Hunter with a double this third game. He's got a split staring at him. And now Brandon, I think that scored a balk. And that's an open frame for Hunter, so... Well, it's strange to say in the third frame, but Team Josh is running out of frames. And that eight count is not what they need. The two eight spare. They just gotta run the table. Brandon takes care of the spare, but spares aren't going to get it. Logan knew that was good as soon as it came off his hand. And once again, Josh frustrated by an eight count. That four pin wiggled and moved, but it just wouldn't fall. We got a spare on the rack. <laughs> but he takes care of the spare. And I think he is starting to become resigned to his fate in this game and the fate of his team. Anthony moves deep inside that time, hoping the ball would set in the oil, but it jumped just enough to leave the 4-9. And he's just not having any luck at all. 
So another open. Well, we said this in the very first game. Opens are bad anytime, but in nine pin no tap, they're almost fatal. Especially if you're bowling against players who are pretty high octane like these guys. Another solid strike for Christian. Well, I don't know where that gutter ball came from that he threw in the second frame. I wonder sometimes if Christian doesn't just throw one of those occasionally just to say hello to his fans. <laughs> Brandon was begging for that one. He made the heart shape with his hands. He loved it when it came off his hands. There's a no-tap strike for Hunter. And once again, Josh has got to feel like, what does it take? That could have been nine. Well, it could have been seven, too, but it's eight. It is what it is in this game. And he hooks by the 6'10 for an open, and I know how you feel, little buddy. Another good one by Logan. He let that one go and just took off running. He knew that it was perfect as soon as he threw it. Back to the spare ball for Anthony that time, and that worked. When you're bowling nine pin no tap, all you want to do is get to the pocket. If you can get to the pocket, you're probably going to get nine, at least. Like that. Nine is enough. Even better when you hit it there and they all go. Not better on the score sheet, but makes you feel a little better anyway. Well, at some point in this game, Team Hunter is going to cross the threshold where it's out of the woods and they've won the match. We may already be there. Hunter with a strike in the fifth. Gets him a little closer. There's the shot that Josh has been looking for. Even when you're getting beat, you don't ever want to just give up. It's a bad habit to get into, and, you know, at least you just keep trying. Good shot for Logan. And a high hit by Anthony, and just nothing is going his way today. He can't wait for this to be over. And I can't say that I blame him. That looked like that could have gone, but another open. I used to tell my golf partner, I may give out, but I'll never give up. And I think those are good words to live by, even when you're getting beat. At least keep showing up, and giving it your best. May not be enough in the end, but at least you'll know you gave it your best. Christian's got a good game going. He's now got five natural strikes out of six frames. And then there's that second frame where, <laughs> well, we all remember what happened there. Oh, my God. 
Hunter was begging for that thing to stay to the right. It needed to get up. See, that has just been Josh's problem all day. Has a pretty good shot. Could have been nine, maybe. And Hunter just whiffs the two, four, five. Goodness. There's a spare for Josh. Hunter, I think, is just trying to get this over with as well. He's ready for the stepladder finals to begin so that he can bowl one of these two players, Christian or Logan. It looks like it may be, well, it's too early to tell, really. Another nine strike for Anthony. <laughs> Logan just took off that time knowing that he probably got nine. Well, some of these kids are just kind of playing around now. They're just going through the motions to finish this out. Christian still seems pretty serious about his bowling, though. He's got his headphones on. He's off in his own little world. Brandon goes to his knees before that ball was halfway down the lane. And he needed to beg for some mercy because that thing was going Brooklyn hard. Well, that's half of them, Hunter. And another eight count for Josh that could maybe have been nine. But... He will shoot at the 4-7. And covers it easily. Meanwhile, Hunter's got the 2-4-5-7-8. And he nearly chopped the 2-4-7-8 off the 5, but that 5 tilts out, barely. So it's a spare. Well, anytime you're throwing a plastic spare ball like Anthony is and you miss wide, it's not coming back. That's what happened to Anthony. And Logan knew that was good as soon as he let it go. And now he's just monkeying around. Pretty good attempt at the washout by Anthony, but it's just not his day. And sometimes that happens. And if he's not feeling well, that's unfortunate. All right. Christian will go next on lane 39. And that's now six in a row. And his first nine pin no tap strike this game. The rest have been naturals. Yikes. The three, four, seven, 10. That's one you don't see all that often. When you do see it, it usually has the six. Hunter crossing over and that ball had nothing on it. And that ball actually deflected around the seven in the gutter. And he leaves the seven nine split. And Brandon goes and grabs a house ball. That's about a 10 pounder I think he just threw. As you could see it didn't have any power when it hit the three pin. That's an open. Hunter with a field goal for an open. Josh threw that one slower than he's thrown any ball today, and that's why it hooked radically to the left, missing the head pin on the Brooklyn side. He's got the one, three, six. 
And there's a spare. Well, I think all six of these players will be glad when this team competition is through. And I think you can see why I had originally decided not to release this episode. I like to cast these kids in as positive a light as possible, but with all the monkeying around, I just didn't feel like it was appropriate. But there was enough good bowling on this episode that seemed like, all right, I think our prodigy fans would enjoy seeing it. And... You know, this match just got out of hand. This format that I chose just did not lend itself to a close finish. What a shot! So I put that on me. Brandon comes in light, leaves a split. Hey, show us a trick shot. Look at Hunter just tilt out the five like that. Just enough. All right, the two, four, ten. What do you got, Brandon? Well, not the shot he had hoped to throw. Some days you're the dog, some days you're the fire hydrant. And once again, Josh hooks just high enough that he can't quite get nine to go and instead will have to shoot at a two pin spare. Meanwhile, Big Logan, once again, only failing to strike once in this game so far. Okay. Well, this is the kind of monkey business I was talking about. Another spare for Josh. That's one way to do it. And that's another. Nine counts as a strike. But I'll tell you what, we may see some sort of record for margin of victory here. And Brandon lofts that one nearly to the heavens. And look at this, he leaves the left-handers, Greek Church, throwing a six-pound ball that deflected around the 4-7-8. Meanwhile, Christian is continuing to stay in his own little world, not paying much attention to these other kids. He's got his headphones on. I know he's listening to rap music because that's what he loves. Going for the two over there on the right. That's the way to make it if you want to make it. And why not at this point? We know who's going to win this match. Team Hunter is going to send their three players to the step ladder. A little wide to get nine this time, so Christian is going to have a spare to shoot. A 2-4-8, but he's going to be in the 250s. And Josh, I think he's just out of gas. These kids bowled league this morning. And I think this three game match and this ridiculous format just took all the energy that all of them had. Nine out, that's gonna be 141 for Josh. And now he gets to go home. Hey guys, take cover. 
And now Anthony. <laughs> that is a 10 pound house ball. Maybe nine, not sure. Well, just get it over with. We still have a couple of matches left. But you go through the nose often enough and you're going to leave one of those. Meanwhile, I think Christian is waiting for his ball. And that's another field goal. So, mercifully, it's over for Team Josh. They're done. And now it's just a formality as we wait for Christian's bowling ball to come back. So he and Hunter and Logan can finish. There goes the mechanic. To go grab Christian's bowling ball and send it back. Well, you know, in five years time, I've dreamed up a lot of different formats for these kids to use on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Most of them have been pretty interesting, I'd say. Every once in a while, we get a clunker. But even with a clunker, we got some pretty good bowling out of some of these kids. Logan's been on fire. Christian has had his moments today. There's a spare, and he finishes with 2.53. So except for that second game, Christian is bold, lights out. Hunter moving deep inside. I can pretty much guarantee you that's not where the shot is. And now he will shoot for the 2-5. And he chops it. And honestly, I think there is a lesson here. When you goof around, you tend to lose focus. And now let's see which of these players has their focus when we get to the stepladder matches. I can tell you this much, a few pairs down to our left, out of the view of the camera. Annalise O'Brien is practicing. A few pairs down farther to her left, her dad is giving a lesson to an adult league bowler. And I've looked down there and observed Annalise a few times today and she's ignoring all this chaos up here. She is just all business. And her dad would have it no other way. And I'm telling you, that's how you become a back-to-back -back two time defending national champion as Annalise was at the time this show was taped. She was back-to-back -back U15 girls champion at Junior Gold when we taped this show in December 2019. Well, Logan finishes with a 266 to go with his 277 and 300. We'll have to add that up. That's quite something. Hunter and Christian start the stepladder right after this. If you're really serious about becoming a better bowler, be sure to ask your pro shop about some great new ways to improve your game. 
a great new video, Dick Weber's Guide to Better Bowling, filled with expert advice that'll help you perfect your technique and develop better shot-making strategies. Here's a sample. Of all the steps you can take to become a better bowler, none are more important than the four or five steps you take on the approach to the foul line. Let's look first at the four-step approach. The four-step approach is favored by many recreational and league bowlers, as well as some pros. If this is the approach you find most comfortable, practice it over and over until it feels completely natural. Also, ask your pro shop about two great new bowling balls designed specifically for league bowlers, the Dick Weber Legacy and the Dick Weber Legacy Reactive from AMF. The advanced technology of these bowling balls, adapted from the designs used by the pros, will help make you a better bowler. The Dick Weber Guide to Better Bowling video and the Dick Weber Legacy and Legacy Reactive Bowling Balls. Available at your pro shop. Well, it almost didn't seem like a fair fight. With a margin of victory of 423 pins, Team Hunter took a big lead in the first game and just kept pouring it on. But Josh had the first pick in the draft Sometimes it's just not your day, but other times it is, and today it was Big Logan's day. He was on fire throughout the three-game match, firing games of 300, 277, and 266 for a total of 843. And while, yes, it's only nine-pin no-tap, that's still a score that would win some nine-pin no-tap tournaments I've bowled in. Big Logan registered 34 out of 36 possible strikes, and of those 34 strikes, 24 were natural strikes, with 8 in the first game, 7 in the second, and 9 in his third game. And while the action got kind of silly toward the end, it's easy to see why. With the margin of victory completely out of hand, some of our players were understandably just going through the motions. But we still have the matter of crowning an individual champion to be decided. Remember, the winning team today is sending its three members to a short two-match stepladder. Hunter's 558 series puts him in the three seed, where he'll face Christian, who recorded a solid 713. And then the winner of that match will face Big Logan, who seems unstoppable today. The winner of that match will sign the coveted trophy pin. So let's get this first match underway. It features our three seed, Hunter Moffitt, with games of 244, 163, and 151 for a 558 series against Christian Minnell, who shot 266. 194 and 253 for a 713 series total. Again, the bowling nine pin no tap on the house shot. And Christian, being the higher qualifier, had the choice of starting lanes and as is his usual choice, he has opted to start the match. and gets a break in the first frame. Goes through the nose, that could have been just about anything, but he gets nine, and that's a no-tap strike to begin. And now Hunter. And a trip four. So Hunter stays even with Christian through the first frame. Take another look at this one. Watch the two pin. It'll go around the four. Actually, it didn't trip it. It just barely tipped it backwards on its way around the four. This time, he has the four nine standing, and the nine goes out late. So that's a no tap strike. Again, the notations on the score sheet X is a natural strike. N is a strike that they get by throwing nine. 
A ring 10 is good for a no-tap strike. So both players perfect through the first two frames. These two have met on Prodigy a few times, and I wish I could tell you who leads, but I don't keep those records. Maybe one of you will look it up and tell me. Well, that one goes high, and now Christian is going to have to shoot the 3, 6, 10. Remember, in 9-pin no-tap, if you get 9, that's as good as a strike. But anything less, and you got to shoot it. And if you get 9 out on your second ball, that's still an open frame. And he nearly runs by the three, but he covers all three pins with the ball and can't really do it any better than that. But Hunter takes a three pin lead sitting on the bench. And he slaps out the 10 pin, so that's three in a row to open this first match of our two match step ladder. Watch it again, he's playing about 14 at the arrow. That goes out to about seven at the break point, and that's what you like to see. That one comes in a little light, and he gets the wall shot. The seven doesn't go, but nine is enough. So Christian's Got his hands full, looks to me. He makes a solid pass at it there and gets a strike. Watch it again. Five step approach. Christian drifts about six boards to the left. That's okay as long as you do it the same every time. Throws that out to about 11 at the break point. He's playing a good bit deeper on the lane than Hunter, but he's got a higher rev rate. Played the fourth arrow that time and gets a light shaker to go. Wall shot. Watch it. Over the fourth arrow, maybe 19 out to about 11. It doesn't quite get back, but he hits it in that wall shot shaker area. Similar line to what Hunter played on that ball. He wasn't quite as deep. Watch this. He's gonna play a little straighter over about 14th board, but out to about 11 at the break point. That's where you want it. That one he pulled a little bit and and now he's going to have to pay the price. A 20-pin lead. And unless he pulls off a miracle here, most of that's going to be gone in a second. Nine out. And that will leave Hunter with an 8-pin lead. And now Christian, working on a double, can take the lead with a strike here in the sixth. These nine pin no tap games, anytime you got scoring super high, it can get very interesting. There's his strike and now Christian moves out ahead by two. But Gotta look out, because Hunter could come right back. You see him out there on that 11th board at the break point where you see those tracers on the lane. Those dark boards down there at about the 37 to 43 foot mark. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Christian going just a little too high and this time he's left himself to 4-9. You want to put the ball over to the left of the four pin, just graze it, slide it over into the nine. 
He went for it boldly, but misses them both. And when you're on a strike, those two pins you lose and count become four. So now Hunter's lead is 14. And he can build on that with a couple of strikes here. You see him motioning, get left, get left. He wanted that thing to hit a little higher in the pocket than it did, but it doesn't matter. He got nine, so that counts as a strike in nine pin, no tap. Player can sense if he's thrown it good or if it's gonna come in in that half pocket. He knew that was good as soon as it left his hand and Hunter expands his lead to 24 with that double. Watch this, this is high flush. 10 in the pit. Christian gets a shaker to go, there's your wall shot. We'll take another look at this, watch the head pin. The one in front, he's going to hit it thin on the right side, send it to the left wall, and watch what it does. It comes back and gets the four, five, and seven. And the late nine goes. Wouldn't have mattered if it had stood. It still would have been a no-tap strike. But this is what makes high scoring so interesting. Hunter gets off to a 24-pin lead, but now Christian is back in it. And Hunter says, well, wait a minute. Not so fast. That strike builds his lead back to 24. And now he's got the shutout ball in hand. Watch this. That was right in the hole, right where he wanted the last one on lane 40. A strike here, and he wins. But no, it drifts high and he leaves a difficult spare. He's already missed this once today. The three, six, nine, ten. Look at the score sheet. If he spares and then strikes on the fill ball, he'll shoot 241. Christian can strike out for 241. Oh, but he does the same thing he did the last time he shot at it. Leaves the nine pin, so that's a 229. So here's the situation. Christian must strike on this ball, and then he's gonna need another one on his second ball to win. All right, there's nine, that's as good as a strike. So he takes the lead with that one. Now here's the deal. If he gets eight on his first ball, he will need to spare to tie. If he gets nine or a strike here, he wins the match. If he would happen to get seven on this ball, Hunter would win. Here we go. And there's nine and a winner for Christian Minnell. Hunter knows it, he can keep score. So with that no tap strike, that gives Christian 231 if he throws the next one away. And we have seen him do that a time or two now, haven't we? But I'm gonna go out on a limb and predict that he doesn't do that here. Possible 241 with a strike. And there it is, a natural strike at that. So it's Christian Minnell who takes the first match in the stepladder, and he will advance to face Big Logan Mathis in our championship match. That's coming up next. Hi, when you think of bowling, 
Who do you think of? AMF, right? Right. Shoes and styles and colors for every guy and gal. A complete line of colorful polyester and rubber bowling balls. Handsome bowling bags to match. Put them all together and you're bowling in style. AMF style. So long, Paula. We're going bowling. Yeah. Why not? They're AMF pros. AMF bowling balls, bags, and shoes available at your pro shop or bowling center. Here's another reason I love to bowl. AMF shake waffle and bowl. $9.50 is all it takes to gain shoe hire a waffle and a shake. But only on Sundays at school holidays. AMF shake waffle and bowl. Look on the bowling in the yellow pages, yeah. Hunter made a valiant effort, and if not for that open in the 10th frame, he might have given Christian all he could handle. But once again, the lesson here is to make your spares. With all the attention paid to stringing strikes, even in nine pin no tap, it often comes down to making a spare. So it's Christian Manel who advances to face the hottest player on the lanes today, Big Logan Mathis who's coming off an 8-10 for his three games in the team competition. Let's see if he can maintain that torrid pace. These two players have a bit of a rivalry between them, and Big Logan loves to try and intimidate Christian. But it's all in fun, and once he's on the lanes, Christian isn't afraid of anybody. This should be an interesting match. These two certainly possess the most firepower of any players in our field today. So I would expect, with the lane conditions being as easy as they are and playing nine pin no tap, we're liable to see a pretty high scoring game here. As Big Logan and Christian are performing the ceremonial pre-match handshake and Big Logan taking it to an extreme and trying to cast his spell of intimidation on Christian, but I don't think Christian's having any of it. These two are good friends, They're, it's all in fun, but I promise you when Christian gets up on the lanes bowling against Logan, he does not like to lose. And that nine count to begin gives him a no tap strike. So we're off and running. And it appears that the scoring system in-house, which is supposed to be keeping score for nine pin no tap, it counted that nine count as a nine count. <laughs> I've just told Christian, so I guess you're gonna have to bowl regular. Logan is loving it. Christian is going, no. And we're just playing with him here. It's a strike, but he doesn't think it's a strike. And Logan says spares are going to be brutal. So Christian thinks he's opened in the first, but he actually got a strike. Well, that's what you get for goofing around. The 4 6 10. Tell you what, the way Logan's been bowling today, he might open here, but then he's liable to go off the sheet and shoot 279. So Christian better come correct if he wants to win this match. All right, 278. Logan says, sit down, you're not up. All right, see if he can get back to his striking ways. Well, not the best shot he can throw. <laughs> and Christian is reacting to the fact that now the... Uh, Scoring mechanism counted that nine count as a no tap strike. And we're playing it up with Christian that no, you're gonna have to bowl 
full out and Logan's gonna bowl nine pin no tap. And that wouldn't be fair, so we let him in on the gag and Christian now knows that he got a strike in that first frame. Hey, it's the kind of day it was. Those of you who have watched enough Prodigy Bowlers Tour know that this is an anomaly. We're not always this silly, but it's just the kind of day it was. And that's partly the reason why I didn't want to release this show. That's why, as you see, it was recorded December 7th, 2019, and it's not being released until March 4th, in 2022. Well, there's an eight count, and Christian's going to have to shoot this one. He's left this before today. When you play the big hook like Christian does, if you get it a little too wide, that ball is going to come in behind the head pin sometimes light and send it around the two. And once again, he gets too much of the two pin. That's an open frame, so he gives back the open that Logan handed him in the first. And this match is even, although Logan, working on a strike, can take the lead if he strikes in the third. But it's early. All right. In the pocket, that's what you want when you're bowling nine pin no tap. Even a ball that doesn't hit really solid in the pocket will usually get you nine. And for some reason, it's still not scoring as a strike the way it should, but we'll get them to fix that at the counter. Meanwhile, the scoring you're looking at on screen here on Prodigy, that is correct. And Logan scatters him, and with that double, he takes a 10-pin lead. And if he keeps doing the way he's been doing all day, I think Christian is going to have an uphill climb. That one gets all the way out to about six and gets back and scatters him. He can extend the lead to 20 here with another strike. Well, he does it, although not in the most picturesque way. A big runaway train, Brooklyn, leaves the five. But it's just as effective as a solid pocket hit. Christian trails by 20. And he comes in light behind the head pin again and leaves another 210. And this is getting old. A 2-8-10 cost him the Prodigy Tournament of Champions back in 2018. So we have seen him shoot at this a few times. Oh, and this time he gets it. A beautiful shot. Oh yeah, he does leave a lot of those. And Christian converts the 210. And I tell you what, that keeps him in the match. Brandon, are you coming? Yeah, I got you. I got you, Brandon. And he shreds the rack on that one, so a solid strike in the fifth. And Christian hopes that that is an indication of what's to come. Over about 18 at the arrows, out to about 10 at the break point. And five pin slices out the seven. 
And what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Logan sends one a little too wide, comes in behind the head pin and leaves the 210. Now he's going to need to make this to stay 18 pins ahead. But no, it's an open and now his lead is down to six with Christian working on a strike. So the plot thickens. What is this? What is this? That's just an angry ball. Why would you do that? You're still leading in the match. Well, that's just a knucklehead move right there. Eight out, and he hands the lead to Christian, who now goes from six pins in arrears to leading by six. I don't understand that one. And Christian takes full advantage, putting a strike up there behind a strike, so that six pin lead becomes 16. Watch it again. Got that one a little wider, about to about eight. And he gets the wall shot. He can extend to 26. And that's exactly what he does with a no-tap strike. So that mistake that Logan made in the sixth may come back to haunt him because he was leading when he threw that reckless shot. I don't know what that was about. He doesn't take any time to get lined up, although I guess it doesn't matter when you've got as much talent as he has. You just kind of step up there and throw it, and you know you can get it to the pocket. And he's doing the same thing here. But this time, he sends it wide with a ball that doesn't hook as much. And he's just giving this match away. Why? What are you doing? Okay, well, like I said earlier, there were a number of reasons why I was not real keen on releasing this episode of Prodigy Bowlers Tour, and you're seeing part of that play out here. But I figured with that 843 that Logan shot in the team competition, I thought Prodigy viewers would enjoy seeing it. Figured Logan would enjoy seeing it. But now Christian, on the heels of Logan just kind of throwing this match away, is just going to run away and hide. Hit him thin and watch him spin. Logan looked unbeatable today. But I guess when the strikes just stopped coming, he was like, okay, well, I'm not interested now. Okay. Christian with what some call the PBA washout or the super washout. The one, two, four, six, ten. Two ways to shoot it. You can try to send the one over into the 610, or you can hit the right side of the head pin, try to deflect into the six. That's what he's doing. But that's the risk you run. And it's an open, so it gives Logan a little bit of life here. And there is a no tap strike. So Logan is mathematically still in this, and if he had 
paid attention and tried in those few frames in the middle of this match, he might be in control. So let's see what happens here. Logan can strike out for 190. That would force Christian to mark. Well, you can't throw it any better than that. And Logan has thrown a whole lot of shots like that today. More than anyone else in the field, to be fair. That one comes in light, but he still manages to get nine out of it, so that's what he needed. 190, Christian has an 11 pin lead, but that's not the issue. Christian needs a mark right here. Any kind of a mark and he wins. And that's the best kind of mark there is. Well, it was a circuitous route they took to get here. And for the life of me, if I live to be a hundred, I'll never understand what Logan was thinking there in the middle frames of this match, when he basically just threw the match away. Almost intentionally, I think it may have been intentional, but I don't know. Christian is gonna finish with 211 with a strike on the fill ball here. We take another look at the strike in the 11th. Out to about eight. And one more time. And that's a 211 to 190 victory. He may have been the last draft pick today, but Christian Manel gets the last laugh. We'll wrap things up after this. What's even more exciting than bowling? League bowling. At Bowl America. Go for it, Eddie. We really need a strike. I love to hear that cheering. You'll hear it every week. Just join a Bowl America League. New leagues are forming now. So come to Bowl America. Yay! Where thousands cheer. Yes! 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 One pin away from Lock in first place. Then loose at Valley Bowl. Take the Valley Highway or Academy Exit to security. Well, the championship match wasn't quite the high scoring strike a thon that I thought it might be. But I think with all the silliness of today's competition, it just took a toll on everyone. And Big Logan just seemed to run out of juice. But even then, he still closed strong and gave Christian a little something to think about in the 10th frame. But on this day, Christian was up to the challenge. It would be Christian's only time signing the coveted trophy pin during the 2019-2020 season, the season that would be suspended quite abruptly a few months later when the whole world saw life turned upside down by the COVID pandemic. Something that, to one degree or another, we're still living with to this day. 
No video exists of Christian's triumphant moment of signing that red coveted trophy pin. So we'll look at my dog Oreo wearing her Christmas antlers instead. She wowed the neighbors for the next couple of weeks wearing them. This is the last of the Prodigy Bowlers Tour footage I have that you haven't seen before. So the next new content you'll see of Prodigy Bowlers Tour will have to originate from the Kansas City area where I'm now living. I've made some contacts with some people involved in the local bowling scene here, and I have some leads concerning where Prodigy might land. Hopefully, I'll have some news for you in the coming weeks and months. Just know that I'm working behind the scenes in hopes of bringing you a whole new series of Prodigy Bowlers Tour shows featuring some fine young bowlers from here in mid-America. But in the meantime, this is Coach Randy reminding you to stay safe and keep your eyes on your target, whether you're at school, at work, or on the lane.